What is up? It's me, Kat, and welcome back to my channel. I truly had the instinct to do jazz hands right then, and if that doesn't say what kind of musical theater trash I am, I don't know what does. Today, we are talking all about Broadway audition songs you should never use, aka Broadway songs, off-Broadway songs, West End songs, standalone composer songs that you should not be using in an audition setting. Also, if you're new here, hi, my name is Catherine. Do you wanna be friends? Please be my friend. I like musical theater, I like makeup, I like movies. Hit subscribe if you like any of those things or internet cults because we somehow developed into an internet cult, but I'm not really complaining about it, so maybe I am part of the problem. Question of the day, what is the worst or most misguided audition song you've ever used? Personally, I will never live this down. I sang Walking on Sunshine, the Allie and AJ version, for a production of Little Shop of Horrors. Granted, I was like eight, but still not great. Let me know about your worst audition songs in the comments down below. So let's get right into the video. Tip number one, avoid using a mega famous song, especially if you're new to musical theater, like Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid or Somewhere Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. Don't rain on my parade, let it go. First and foremost, especially if you're new to musical theater or just auditioning in general, it'll make you look really uninformed. The vast majority of the time, directors don't don't want to have to teach you from the ground up. They don't want to spend precious rehearsal time teaching you where up stages or how to cheat out. Show that you know what's up by not making a newbie mistake. Tip number two, don't choose songs from currently mega popular musicals. Now here's the weird thing, this kind of idea applies to everyone, but it'll differ depending on your age and what level you're auditioning at. For instance, if you're auditioning for your school musical or like youth community theater, I would strongly recommend against using songs from like Six or Beetlejuice, Heathers, Waitress, Dear Evan Hansen, Hamilton. Basically, if you can find it on TikTok, don't use it for your school audition. Whoa, I said TikTok, am I hip with the kids now? On the flip side of all of that being said, let's say you're a little bit older or auditioning at a more professional level or just basically anything that's not a school or young adult audition, some of those songs might be awesome audition pieces for you and they might be totally appropriate and not super overdone. Category number three, classically overdone audition songs. These are those songs that are so popular that they've kind of become a meme in the musical theater community as no-nos to sing at auditions. I'm talking about songs like On My Own from Les Miserables or Think of Me from Phantom of the Opera, popular from Wicked, Being Alive from Company. This is the moment from Jekyll and Hyde. Oh my gosh, if I hear one more tenor. That's a meme that I feel like a lot of middle school kids aren't using, but a lot of adults still are. Adults just really like Wildhorn. So here's the deal with those songs. It's almost kind of annoying and a little eye roll inducing to the audition panel. Again, it kind of slips into that category that it makes you sound like a newbie. Plus with so many other different audition songs to choose, I'd just recommend avoiding those. Category number four, and this one's a big one and kind of a doozy. Don't audition with a song that doesn't fit you or fit the musical you're auditioning for. Let's say I'm auditioning for a production of Oklahoma. I should not use a song like One Song Glory from Rent for a number of reasons. First off, that song doesn't fit the show. It's not even the same genre of music. Keep in mind that for an audition, it doesn't really matter how amazing you sound singing a song in the style of Rent if the casting panel needs to hear how amazing you sound singing a song in the style of Oklahoma. The second reason that I shouldn't use an audition song like One Song Glory is because it doesn't fit my type. I'm a young ingenue soprano female. There is no world where I would realistically be playing Roger in Rent. I need to choose songs that fit my casting type, songs that belong to characters that I could currently realistically play. You want to choose songs that fit fit you vocally, songs that you don't have to push or strain. The audition songs that you choose and that you work on should be songs that you can nail consistently. Category number five, avoid songs with a crazy difficult piano part. Unless you're auditioning at a relatively high or professional level, even still then, 
be wary of it. Or if you're auditioning for a show with a very crazy piano part as part of the signature sound of the music. Sondheim, I'm referring to Sondheim. So here's what's up with that. If you're auditioning at a high level, your audition accompanist will probably be able to play it, but I've even been in the room at equity auditions where I've seen pianists fumble. I mean, it is so difficult to not only sight read music that you may have never played before, but you're trying to play along with someone that you've never played with before. Even if the song goes off perfectly without a hitch, it can still be problematic and distracting. You don't want that. You want the focus to be on you and your performance. Some examples of songs to avoid would be pieces written by composers like Sondheim or Gettle or Jason Robert Brown. A great tip, however, is if you really, really want to sing a piece that has a difficult piano part, look for a more simple arrangement. I have a couple of different arrangements of the title song from Light in the Piazza for that very reason. It's a lifesaver. Number six, try to avoid really repetitive songs or songs that lack a dramatic arc. The absolute number one best example of this, Wash That Man Right Out of My Hair from South Pacific. It is the same couple of notes over and over again and the same thematic idea over and over again. Not really a great piece if you get a short amount of time to really show off what you can do. Number seven. I forgot how to count. Don't sing the most obvious choice. Here's a real life example of that and why it matters so much. So I was behind the table for a professional audition where we had some non-union appointments, we had union appointments, people who had done the Broadway production, people who had done the national tour, international tour, big show, lots of crazy awesome talent. During that process, we heard Spark of Creation from Children of Eden more times than any one person ever needs to listen to that song. And don't get me wrong, I love that song. I think it's beautiful. We heard some crazy awesome performances of it through that process, but we just heard the exact same cut on a loop like every 10 minutes for four days in a row. It was like the weirdest waking nightmare and that makes sense because I feel like a lot of my nightmares are musical theater related. As a result of so many people using the most obvious choice, we really only remembered or cared about the top five renditions of it, even though there were probably 30 or so incredible auditions with it. So we just kind of forgot about them or felt like they were just kind of meh. And then someone came in and sang Easy As Life from Aida and it was such a reprieve and such a breath of fresh air. That girl, booked. But here's the thing, that girl didn't reinvent the wheel. For the show that we were casting, that song wasn't a crazy out of the blue choice. It actually made great sense. But instead of being like the first most obvious choice, it was maybe fourth or fifth on the list. No one else really bothered to think that deep. Thinking down the list and going with a slightly more unusual piece can really help you stand out, especially if you're auditioning at a really high volume call. So where does that leave us now? You might be watching this video and you feel totally empowered and awesome and you know exactly what you wanna do for your next audition, or you might be totally panicking because I just shot down every idea you've had. I got you. Here are some common ways to find better audition songs. So let's say you want to sing Home from Beauty and the Beast for an audition. That's Belle's kind of number one solo song that everyone always thinks about when they think Beauty and the Beast. Try instead finding something else the character sings. So rather than singing Home, maybe check out A Change in Me. Try finding another song written by the same composer that has a similar vibe. So Beauty and the Beast composed by Alan Menken. Lucky for you, Alan Menken has a huge library of material. So maybe you could check out something like World Above or Beyond My Wildest Dreams from The Little Mermaid. You could try finding a similar character. Belle, for instance, is very headstrong, very smart. She kind of prides herself on being the smartest person in the room, yet she's still very kind and very princessy and has that kind of Disney family-friendly heroine quality about her. That kind of character breakdown definitely reminds me a lot of someone like Katherine Plummer from Newsies or Mary Poppins from Mary Poppins. You could also try to find material from a show from a similar genre. For instance, Home is of course from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. That means that you're probably looking for another family-friendly adventure royalty, maybe fantasy style musical. Maybe you could check out something like Once on this Island or Big Fish or Anastasia. I also have a 
ton of other videos on this subject. How to find the perfect audition song, how to tell whether or not an audition song is too inappropriate, tons more helpful tips and guidelines. I'll link some of those down below in the description box, but you can definitely find more in the musical theater and acting advice playlist on my channel. Which, do you know what? I'll go ahead and link that playlist down below too. So check that out for tons, I mean tons of advice videos. So now something else worth noting. I don't know the preferences of the company you're auditioning for or the level of professionalism that your school expects you to maintain or anything like that. Tons and tons of variables in the audition process. This video is just kind of my top advice that I would recommend across the board, whether or not you're a student performer or a professional. I wanted this to just be kind of generally applicable to everyone. So take the advice that fits you and don't take the advice that doesn't. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please, please, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and I'd really, really appreciate it. Hit subscribe to join my internet cult. Yes, we're an internet cult. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.